Hello everyone, in our today's video, we're going to create a Next.js application and then we're going to set up that Clark authentication within this application layer. As you see, that Clark will provide a customized sign-in or sign-up form to just keep aligned and also you can use that OAuth authentication just to go and keep with that. So we're going to create everything from the scratch and we'll just go step by step. So first of all, let's go and create one Next.js application and to create that in the Next.js documentation and don't worry, we're going to, I'm going to just hook up all the link in the description so you can get back to the description and just fetch the link from there or also you can just directly go that link to the Next.js.org. So from the here, click on get started and from here as you see the installation guide so i'm gonna just need to copy that link and px create next app at latest and here is my directory so what i'm gonna do to open my terminal here so in the terminal i'm gonna just go with that to like i'm gonna just run that command you can use your terminal to just create that so paste that one and i will just keep that name as auth test and hit enter and so we're gonna use that next.js uh, latest feature as you see the 15.0.3 so that till that the latest build is there and by default we're gonna have a various setup so we will do that using typescript yes lind yes Talwin css okay good to go and no need to go with the source directory app router okay and of course we're gonna try that turbo pack and no okay so now it's gonna spin up and create a template react uh, next.js application to let us go to go application is created so let's put alice to see where it has been so it, we can just need to go within the directory we can go into cd auth test and now we can just open it to run it code is based out within our code editor and by the way you can also open it from a directory over here you just need to go within the directory and from here show more options you can also open it directly within that open with code setup okay so as we have in the application now there is a various scenario we have uh, the parent layer file sector which is the typescript configuration the ts config so all the typescript setup is just aligned from here how it gonna render the typescript uh, formulation it can just define from here and after that we have the telewin.config.ts for telewin css setup and also one readme file to just go set up to read how you can start with the project we have that post uh, post css to CS, uh, .config .mgs for here as you see the plugin we are using telewin css but without any dependencies now in that package.json is like whatever the package we are using and also we in the package as you see we have the react and also the react dom in rc react also in that release can that mode maybe within a few week or days it will just come and publish and we have that package log.json where we are having all the package dependency uh, triggered and then we have also one file next.config.ts this file is all for the next just configuration when you're getting the image and other parameter we are using that one to configure that we have next.env.d.ts as you see this file should not be edited it's written here so this uh, next yes is maintaining that one so we are not going to touch it okay good and we have one file the git ignore as you see all git ignore setup is just combined here so whenever you are going to commit in this entire thing to github or you are adding your git it will just ignore those kind of setup especially as you see the node module is a big file so it's good to go to have that then we have also yes lint uh, trc for json and also for that uh, setup for typescript then we have one public directory here where we have the file globe and other uh, just dummy uh, setup of the svg then we have the heavy one the node modules there all the package are installed all the dependency installed here then we have our most important file which is f folder so this is the responsible to get entire things within the project so before explaining it let's just go and run our application and i will just take one a new terminal here and from this positioning i will take my git bash and one command which will let us run our project which is npm run dev if you're using yarn to create your project you just make yarn run dev if pnpm pnpm dev that's fine so now our application is just open in localhost 3000 so if i just come here take a new tab 
just try local host 3000 so we should be able to get our application combined and run in here as you see it's compiling so it will just take a bit of time to run this is the setup so this is our next.js application the default setup so as you see that looks so cool it's a clean build so what i'm gonna do it right now i'm gonna explore that one so in that app we have one phone directory here is that google phone format for the phone setup in our locally that font is available here then we have one fabi icon by which it can trigger in your as you see in that uh, project layer it will come back within that uh, trigger or the documentation layer as you see that it can give you a little icon baby icon here then we have that global store css which the css file for our tailwind css setup then we have our layout and that's the responsible that's the one of the core file by which our entire application is rendering then we have our paste.tsx whatever you are seeing here entirely is coming from this file so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove everything then i'm gonna take another div within that div i'm gonna take an h1 and within that layer we can just go with that so i'm gonna say clark authentication project save and after did that as you see the clark authentication project is right here and there is some kind of stylist there which is giving a black scenario so that's coming from the root and other parameter i'm just going to remove that additional setup just keeping that three so as you see the clark authentication project is right here so right now what we are going to do is to that to create our authentication scenario so first thing first within that directory in the root layer i'm gonna take one folder which will be components so in the components we're gonna trigger other parameter and here we are going to use that shatshian ui to create interactive ui so let's go in that shatshian ui and from there let's open this application layer so we'll go in the documentation layer so from the docs okay get it started okay it's just uh getting a bit of time okay we click on get it started and on this process as you see the installation guide here so we are using nextjs let's go in the nextjs uh, by the way you can use that with the wait remix astro laravel gets bay so also in the manual you can just direct it within that react.js application so click on nextjs and a very simple setup first you need to go with that npx that create project on there then npx session at latest in it so that's the command we need to run within our parameter we are using npm so that's good for us so right now there's a first parameter here and a second uh, terminal i'm gonna just run this command to install entire dependency setup and by the way i use that i create already the components so it will just direct that components directory otherwise it's gonna create one okay it's installing after installing any more setup is there no okay so right now as you see after installation we are also going to create one button here let's click in button so we can render our button uh to using the same common parameter as you see that will be the button default button okay so proceed i see y and we will go with uh let's go in the default setup and natural okay yes now it's going through it and there is uh i think it looks like you are using react 19 some packages may fail to install due to peer dependency issues in npm and that's a good thing because uh, react js is newly adapted and best thing you can do is that use legacy peer dependency so you can use also by force but it's better way so it will just go with the dependency without any error it will go and do the other setup how you can manage those uh, scenario okay it's installing those dependencies and as you see everything installed and if you just go in the leave you see one hls.ts so here you can see the clx tell in margins available also if you go in the package you see those packages is just installed by using those uh, our friend here over the chat anyway so let's just go and grab our button to get the button you see we are not going to manual we'll go in the cli so npm and hit enter so it will install the button within our components layer okay so it's just uh doing that installing those dependency i think it will be good to go installing yeah so now here you can see one button 
so that's the classic button you can go and customize it and it's very simple to use in that way how we can use that button so let's go here and i'm going to use one button which should be imported from components ui button and here we're going to say click me and let's see what kind of button we are going to have at there so if you go here as you see click me button right here now you can also choose some variant here there is a several variant properties which is the default destructive outline secondary if we just go in the destructive let's see we'll try to pass one variant and how it will react so should be variant and here we're gonna pass the destructive mode which gonna give us a red color which is the destructive mode okay so we can now we know how we can deal with that so first thing first in the components not in the ui i'm going to create one header so it will be header.tsx or fce fce to create that react native functional component and as the normally what we do for this setup in the header uh, especially the header we keep it in our layout portion so that it can call in every single pages so first thing first let's call our header and save so you see already header is available and also i'm gonna do one more thing is that i'm gonna take within a deep parameter okay cool or i think it will be good to go without that deep so first thing first in this portion i'm gonna just class them padding x i'm gonna give it 10 of padding x or instead of padding x i'm gonna just give a padding of 10 okay and for the design parameter it will be very simple i'm not gonna do anything fancy because it's just to go and show you how you can do it and put a class name so first thing first here i'm gonna take an h2 tag where i'm gonna make a logo so let's say shoppers and here i'm gonna render one button so here it will say sign in so that's two setup we are going to create and for that portion put a class name should be padding x should be 10 padding y also going to be let's say 5 and flex item center justify between to stretch all together as you see we have logo we have sign in here and also we can make is a, a border border b and border b should be gray off 300 just to showcase on border or i'm gonna make it as 600 so that you can see it properly okay cool and for that shoppers put a class name i'm gonna make everything as uppercase font should be semi bold text should be lg okay and i'm gonna make it a tracking white and instead of that padding y5 i'm gonna make it three just for a small setup okay cool now we are having a good setup so in the sign in portion we can now and by the way you can also pass the class name if you go here you want to make a more padding so it should be class name and as you see i'm gonna make a padding x of 20 it's gonna provide that 20 as you see so now you can also maintain that style properties so it's very simple and also if you make that a uh, text like a uh, font should be semi bold you are good to go it will work for you so now this is our header and in the page we are going to get our user right so here we're going to get all the properties by which we're going to grab the users so right now we are just going to keep like that so let's go back to the clerk and how we can set up our authentication like once we are signed in how it will work so that's the parameter we're going to set from our uh like any stand and to do that as you see we are going to uh, click on get started and you can log in in a different way there is as you see there's a privacy and other i'm gonna just go and uh, set up as i have already the account i will just go with the sign in and in the sign in i'll go with the google sign in uh, let's try with that so i need to provide my email okay i'm gonna do that so i just open with my login with the google accounts it's directly get it here so previously i have two application running so i'm gonna just go and create another new application and here i need to provide the name so should be auth test a similar name i'm gonna provide and as you see email and google by default is coming so the other you can also go and click the github is feel free to go okay let's create it create application and now 
it's loading my application and instance now here is a little bit guide over here the same parameter i have the next chest i have the react parameter remix austro expo javascript turn stack start so that's a good properties you know to providing all the setup how you can contribute with the several uh, scenario so now here within the npm i need to go and grab that let's copy that and in my terminal i'm gonna just paste it so it will install those dependency whatever need to run my application so i need to remove this and after doing that as you see i need to get those entire thing in my dot env dot local file so it will be lying in my env file right so to do that uh, let's just install give it a time to install it's just sometimes taking a bit of time it's just depending on your network connection okay install so here i'm going to open my env dot env you can keep it local or just simple env doesn't matter it's fine so i'm going to just so you are watching that no no worries but don't try to use it because i'm going to remove that project as soon as i finish that video so no need to use that so that's the two thing and after that also i need to get this middleware.ts and i'm going to explain later on why we need to do that so middleware.ts and here i'm going to paste my this subordinate scenario so that one is done then in my app router as you see this app router and uh, on the layout.tsx i need to cover up i need to wrap everything within my clark provider as you see it's by default is supporting the best thing is that it's supporting in my uh, server side component so no need to make it in a separate layout by which we are doing in some other platform so you can just simply drag it to that layer where you can directly use it as a server side component so that's the provider we require here so so let's just go in my layout.tsx and entire things as you see the it's, it will be the top layer so my entire html would be wrap up with that clark provider so that's the provider it's gonna wrapping up and that provider gonna come from that uh, if you just go in the top clark nextjs okay and hit save and after saving that try to check your application if everything is working okay it's, uh, it's fine it's uh, ha having no issue at all so right now we are going okay so how we can check the user to checking the user is very simple here let's go we're gonna make that const user equal to await and so also once we're getting that await component we also need to make that async as the server side when we are just we are not going to talk within that uh clark uh, database so let's say it will be just uh, i think the current user should be there current user and if we just make a log with that user so we should be able to see if we have any user or not okay if we just go in the bottom as you see the current user is null so means uh we are having a good time as we are not having a user so what kind of things gonna happen if we have the user so i'm gonna make a condition here what kind of condition it will be if we have a user then what we're gonna do if we doesn't have a user what we are gonna go so the both way we can do it and beside that this entire things i'm gonna just load it within a separate properties which will be my clark loaded and that because till the clark loaded it will not take any action okay so right now we are gonna have the same button so second one it will be sign out one sign in one sign out so sign in, uh, so we don't have a user so if we have user that would be sign out so it will be sign out and the other one it should be providing that as sign in okay cool so we have the sign in so now this property is the sign in method so now we need to set up uh, how we can contradict that so that's the sign out properties also we can uh, just wrap with that if we have or i think the best way is to go after the clark loaded mm, we can just make with that without the, those dependency we can just make a simple uh prediction how we can do that so that's the button is there we can just make it with a signed uh like we can say signed in components so once the sign in is available only then it's gonna render as you see uh okay what is saying 
as a default SWR. Really? What we did wrong? I think. Okay, we have Clark loaded. We have signed in. Did you import it? Yes, sign in is imported from. Mm. Ah, okay, this sign in is coming from somewhere else. It should be coming also from that uh, Clark loaded and the same parameter from here, not from that Clark Clark neck. Yes, that's that was the issue, I think. So, okay, yeah, we oh, are cool. So, that one will come the first instances. So, the sign in once uh like we doesn't have this user uh, like when this user is signed in only that time it will come on the sign up and other par properties on if we doesn't have the user we want to show the sign out actually no need to provide the sign out button especially what we can do is that uh we can just go with that if we have the user that time we can i think we are in a wrong uh these properties we should not like if we have signed in what we want to show or i will just for, for right now i'll just go in my previous variation here so if i have user i want to provide a div where we can showcase the user right so we will show the user button from the clerk if we doesn't have the user we are going to show a button which gonna say sign in okay for right now i'm gonna keep this set up and okay now we are having a sign in button and what's gonna happen once we just click on that sign in button so instead of that initial button we can get our clark sign in button so it will be sign i think s i g n sign in button okay so now as you can see we have the clark sign in button and once you click on that button right now if you click here it will redirect you to uh, make a clark a separate authentication page where it can go through and create the uh, setup properties if we just go in our dashboard i think yeah continues to next year's guide okay let's give it a time to take the load here okay it's taking the load as you see now we can make and come from here and go with that page so if you don't want to go with the page we can also make to make the pop-up how we can do that if we can say mood it should be model so what it's gonna do if we click right now it will open a pop-up here and from that pop-up you can go and make sign in too as you see if we just go with our google let's see if it's just triggered or not okay it's taking a bit of time for first instances it will go and take a little bit of time uh what's wrong here is it not going to with the google we try with the google yeah it's, it's trying as you see now okay okay it's it's okay i think it will redirect for first instance it will just go and make some creepy if we just go and back within our application layer yeah it's coming back so i think in our dashboard we can go and as you see we have the total user active users and others so right now we have the users in the users we have this user and on is login and other parameter is there and the uh, configuration i think we can go with some setup if we just go back to our application layer again if we just click here as you see from here we can sign out and after sign out we should be able to see sign in if we just go and grab one more time sign in with google okay we are having a good time okay cool so now suppose we have no google properties let's say sign up so let's sign up with that i'm gonna sign up with one of my email here so it will be and i'm gonna pass password and continue okay not now uh okay need to provide a good password okay cool so what it's gonna do it's gonna send me a verification code and i'm gonna grab my code from my email here and then i'm gonna enter that code so uh did i get the code yet okay it's right here so let me grab the code from there so it will be 
314544 and continue okay so i created my setup and also i can update my profile if you just click on that manage account you can see i can update profile from here and you can grab the file and also i can add more mail i can create a new account so that's very good setup you know in it, by default it's going to handle each and everything now i can showcase my properties here and how i can showcase as you see that's the user we can use so i'm going to copy the same property from there and i'm going to remove that user directly from here uh, okay i i already removed all together that all portion removed from there should not be should be only remove that console let's go in the package and from here i'm gonna pass this okay did i didn't copy it properly so let's copy that okay and it will be an asynchronous function and let's import that current user and right here put a log and let's see what kind of user we are having and even if you just log within that properties like in the terminal as you see it's it will load it in the client it will not load in the client side because the request as you see is also injecting here but focusing on the server so means the request will come in the server side but we can also view it here now from this position let's just see what kind of things we have till here what the information is providing it's very easy to visualize here than this positioning here in that instance so in the server we have our properties we have that uh, email address which is going to be an array because we can set up multiple addresses you can grab the email address as you see that email address is just right here so till now also we have the username which is empty because we didn't set up the username it's just a simple email and other parameter if we just go and manage account we can set from there uh are we really can set no okay let's go in that uh what you can say for the dashboard if we just okay it's loading so we should have two user so that's our another user so from here okay we can grab the user we can provide the name let's say name should be okay so and we done let's say hit save so you should be able to get the username and other properties now if we just go within our application layer and if we make inspect again hit reload so we should be able to get that this time it should be coming within our properties but i think without login and login out it will not be available yeah that's pretty cool it will not be available let's make sign out and this time we're gonna log in again so make sign in here we're gonna provide our email address okay ah, okay we changed the password so it should be okay cool our uh, it's not handling the last name okay it's providing the first name and also we are having that image url and by the way we can update that image from right here if we just go and update profile we can go and upload our image directly okay let's update that any of that simultaneous image hit save uh, okay uh recommended size up to okay there's a size differences but it's i think it's uploaded so let's see one more time what kind of data it's carrying so right now if we just go and hit that so we should be able to see our email address we have the first name what i'm looking is ah that's the last name is here so we can now having that first name and last name so here if we just go and put the name oops i just delete all together so it will be name and in this pen tag i'm gonna generate that should be user dot first name and then we're gonna make uh, also another parameter user dot last name and we can just make an empty string or you can just keep it empty it will be fine 
as you see we have the first name and last name all together now you can also show any other data is available if you just click here and sign out it will disappear right now only the name it will be appearing also if you sign in go with the google and after signing it will just go up with the name and also the image properties and for right now as you see it's very simple purpose in a big application that time it will be a very good help to creating a user and managing user it's a uh, by uh, by free setup you're gonna have a very good uh, combination here you can have a lot of things to uh, just carry on so feel free to go create the application and try to make a proper scenario and don't worry in uh, our next build very soon we're creating some more good projects with this uh, which is going to coming in the blog application and e-commerce application and i'm gonna use that authentication by so far in so many ways that's why my request is you people to try it and try to be familiar because next time we're going to use it more and often so i think you can give it a try to create a small application and just to see how it can run it doesn't matter it will be using with only the next years you can try with the weight you can try with the uh, beer and react js project and it will be a very good help to create on that so all the best to create that we'll see you in next video